collective experience. We have come together from where we are as a scattered body by way of internet to become the gathered bride of Jesus Christ. And on this day, on this post, first post-resurrection Sunday morning, we gather his name to give him thanks for Jesus Christ, who we for sure declare the last week is no longer dead, but he lives among us and he lives within us. And so we declare with all the saints of old, greatest God through Jesus Christ lives within us, that he that is in the world. Let us now, wherever you are, join in the singing of blessed assurance. Inside, but we are dry on the inside. Yeah. 
And as we come on this post, Easter Sunday morning, Heavenly Father, who first of all, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing all of us from a mighty, mighty long way. Because we're locked this morning. If it had not been for you on our side, oh, wow, well, what would we be? And as we come on this beautiful Sunday morning, we just can't help but say thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us now through the year. And if it's your will, we ask that you continue to bless those who are sick this morning, Heavenly Father. Whether it's going to be coronavirus or any other sickness, Heavenly Father. Yeah. We just ask that you be the doctor that you always have been yeah. and heal our wounded and sick and body. Yeah. Then also, Heavenly Father, we also ask that you bless those who are bereaved by loss of love. We just ask that you wrap the love and arms all around them and yeah. comfort them during that time of bereavement. And let them know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And if it's not, if it's not asking too much this morning, Heavenly Father, just ask that you bless our pastor of this great church. Yeah. He and his wife, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you keep them lifted up, Heavenly Father, and keep them on, on the battlefield, Heavenly Father, doing what you have ordained them to do, and that is to serve your people. So we want to thank for them, Heavenly Father, because we realize that they also are front line. And then we also ask that you bless our front line people, yeah. bless all our doctors, bless all our nurses, and all our frontline people, all our uh, law enforcement, everyone who is involved in this preparedness to heaven, Father, as we try to fight this coronavirus. So we we'll, just want to say thank you, because we realize that you are an awesome God. Oh yes, you are, you are an awesome God, because you are a healer, you are a provider, you are a protector, you are a miracle worker, you are a, a way maker, because you have made so many ways out of no ways that we can't even explain. And you also is our joy in the time of sorrow. Well, you also is our bright and our morning star. Yes. You are our living in the valley. Yes. And you are our hope for tomorrow. You yes. are our faith for the faithless. So we just ask that we, we all just keep your faith and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because we're going to have to be alive, Heavenly Father. One day it will be your time to call us and our time to answer. And we don't know what we're going to be either, Heavenly Father. We don't know the age, not the stage, what we're going to be. We could be on 285, or we could be on 920. We could be in the hospital, or we could be even in our home. But why should never be on this morning, Heavenly Father? When you call upon our holy and righteous name, we just want to be ready when you call upon us. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation on all our hearts. Let it be accepted in your sight, because you are our rock, and you are our redeemer. This is in Jesus' name that we do pray. And they were hard to say, Amen. Amen. Can you say, Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, how I love, how I love, call me your name, oh Jesus, Jesus. chapter 20, and I'll be reading verses 19 through 25. That's John chapter 20, verses 19 through 25. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, <clears throat> excuse me, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Lord has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. He said, but he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, 
I will never believe. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
waiting, God, for you to speak briefly to us that we may have bread to live upon throughout the rest of the week. Speak, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare and believe it is done as we experience your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This has been a time of ongoing challenge, but I'm glad to say during this anxious time, we God got a word for us. Yes. God has something to speak to us in spite of it all. And so this morning, because I know we are all anxious, I've had my anxious moments. You have in your order, you had your anxious moments. If you didn't, you would have your anxious moments. So this morning, I want to deal with that anxiety from the biblical text. Uh, let me just tie with this healing uh, from my anxieties. Well, well. In the book of Proverbs, these words are written from the NIV version of the text in Proverbs, there at the 12th chapter, the 20th listen to what he says about this issue about anxiety. An anxious heart weighs down a man, but a kind word or a good word cheers him up. Over in the book of Philippians, that the fourth chapter, the sixth through the eighth verse, Philippians 4, there these words are found, and you know them. Listen to what he says concerning anxiety. That is Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, all right. and the presence of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yes. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Yes. And then he goes at the end of the said, the God of peace will be with you. Over in the book of 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, the seventh verse, read these words are written there. And I love this one. Cast, cast all your cares, well, all your anxiety yes. on him because he cares for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Surviving these anxious times are uh, healing from anxiety. It has been said that these are the times that try the souls of men and women. Well, let me say it another way. These are times that produces anxiety in all of us. Uh, these last four weeks or so have been long days and long nights and many of us are left nervous, fearful, sad, uncomfortable about tomorrow, worried about jobs, worried about bills, worried about church life, worried about home life, and just worried about life in general. We are just, just down on the edge. We are just anxious. And we have these everyday anxieties. And some may have true anxiety disorders. You feel that you have lost control of life. You have irrational fears. You avoid places and circumstances. You have panic attacks that overtake you at the most inopportune times. My, my. You have worries that lead to stress, that leads to avoiding others. And then the psychologist and the psychiatrist would tell me, say, those need our help. And I will tell you this morning, if you're at that point, you will need some ongoing professional help 
in addition to the biblical and the spiritual health. This morning, I'm going to point towards the biblical and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. But if you need help beyond that, I do not, not want to tell anybody that you should not go by and see those whom God has given the gift nice. to heal your mind well. and your body. God will heal your spirit and your soul. And so, on this day, if you are going to survive it in popular thought pattern, we got some suggestions, and let me read those off, and I'm going to go and see what the Bible says about it. First of all, it tells you all to practice good care of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ought to go for a walk or a run every now and then. Mm -hmm. If you do, mask up well and don't have too many folk with you. <laughs> you ought to plan and just don't do things on the spot because in the panic mode, you're you are, you are more apt to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You ought to stay socially distanced to a reasonable degree. But you ought to stay close to people by way of media. Call somebody. That's, and tell somebody to call you. <laughs> you ought to focus. You ought to focus on what you can control and not things that you cannot. You can't control the virus. It is here until the Lord bring a close to it. Amen. And so in the meantime, that's what they say. But let me go to what the Bible says. What the Bible says, that is the, spirit, the biblical and the spiritual. And then if you need the physical that others can do, that God has given those gifts, I pray you go and let that happen. But listen to what the book says for healing from anxiety. First of all, the proverb writer makes it clear. Anxiety in a man's heart or a woman's heart weighs heavy on him or her. And he, he made it clear that anxiety keep you, keep you down. It weighs heavy on him or her. But he goes on down to give one solution. But a good word, a cheerful word, makes him glad or makes her glad. So my first suggestion to you, to heal your anxieties, you ought to seek words to heal you. Yeah. You ought to seek words that are good, that are cheerful. You ought to seek good words when you are anxious. Kind, loving, supportive, faith-building, courageous, trustworthy, gentle, embracing, encouraging, lifting, wholesome, healing words. And those words, the, the book says, it will start healing within you. And that's why you can't have friends who cannot give you a healing word. You don't need friends that keep reminding you how bad things are. You need friends who can also remind you how good things are going to be. That's right. That's you don't need friends who will beat you down at this time, but you need somebody who got enough guard within them yes. to lift you up so that you can see that a brighter day coming. My father, who recently has been hospitalized because of the virus, he reminded me that he stopped looking at TV. He said, why? He was hospitalized the first day. He watched the TV and he became anxious. He couldn't settle down. He thought the tomorrow was not going to come. The young nurse prayed with him and within the other one asked him, say, now, sir, why are you turning the TV off? And he told them that I turned the TV off because it just was not right for me at this time. And every now and then, there are some things you can't watch. Some folks you can't hear. You have to turn it off. Yes, Lord. And so he simply told him it was all. He was all right without him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, if we are going to overcome anxiety, overcome our fears and our worries, we have to turn some things off and say to ourselves, "I'm all right without that." And well, even things that you worry about sometimes turn it off and say, I'm all right without that. Mm -hmm. 
I, I'm all right with all that. And, and so you ought to see words to heal. And words to heal can come from others. Words to heal can come from your Bible, from Bible studies. So words to heal can come from listen to inspiration of music. Yeah, yeah. Words to heal can come from persons who write inspiration. So if you are anxious on this day, seek words to heal. Yeah. Turn off CNN for a little while. That's right. Oh, Turn right. off Fox for a little while. Yeah. Skip the afternoon news. They don't tell you the numbers are going up, and you start thinking, when is my day coming? Right. Well, turn it off, and you won't even know about it. <laughs> it's going to be the same somebody say amen. 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 And then you ought to go on down this writer remind us. He said you ought to be anxious for nothing, yeah. but in prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Make your request known unto God. In other words, he's saying here that we should sincerely share our worries and concerns with God. And that's what the writer in the book of Philippians, there in the fourth chapter, reminds us. The writer there tells us that we should share our concern, share our heaviness yeah. with God in prayer and petition plus thanksgiving. Let me say it again. In prayer and petition, and I say, he said we have thanksgiving, and I say plus thanksgiving. We hurt, we have our problems, we must share them with God. We must tell God through Jesus Christ about our burdens. Tell God about the job. Tell God about the relationship. Tell God about the Feelings of inadequacies. Tell God about the grief without relief. Tell God about the pain without anesthesia, the brokenness of your heart without wholeness of the spirit and the mind and the soul. Tell God all about it. Yeah. Share it with God. And if by chance you do not have the strength to pray by yourself, invite other folks into your world. Tell them that I can't, I can't say a marvelous word. And where two or three, the book says, gather together and they touch and agree. And if you touch and agree together, God says that I will be right there in the midst. I move on your behalf. Pray until weakness becomes strength. Pray until fears become courage. Pray until pain becomes joy, yeah. and I and pray until our goodbyes will become hellos. Pray, 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 pray until your but your 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 good days outweigh your bad days. Yeah. You have to learn to pray, yeah. and we do not pray to tell God to let God know. God already knows. Yeah. We pray because we want to go into His presence. And we want to feel his presence and his care. Prayer reminds us that I'm weak, but God is strong and he can hold me in his powerful hand. So ask God for bread. Ask him for the bread of peace and the bread of joy, and the bread of gentleness and righteousness and healing and security and protection and enthusiasm. Ask God for security and protection. Ask God, God is able to give us a bread and to eat of this bread. He says, you will never hunger again. Well, yeah, we must share our concern with God. Yeah. Not that God did not know, but because we need to know in our minds that God knows. Yeah. And so you tell God all about it. He said again now, then he goes on down his prayer and petition. May I go on down to say the plus Thanksgiving. Now I cannot leave that off because all time we pray and ask God for things, and, but we don't sometimes forget, forget to say thank you. Well. Add Thanksgiving to your prayer and your petition. That's what he said. He said you approach God when you don't want to be anxious. You let it, you tell God what you're going through, tell God your concern. And then he said, now, make sure you have thanksgiving there. Thank God for life's small things. And thank God for things that you think are big and mighty. Thank God for what he gave you. And thank God for the ability to enjoy what he gave you. Thank God for others. I get the sense that 
God is not only concerned about what you ask for, but he's also concerned about your attitude or gratitude, as we would like to say. So when you ask God, you also ought to give some thanksgiving. Not only about your request, because it's so important, but you, God is also concerned about how you respond to what he has already done. Yeah, yeah. Prayer and petition for thanksgiving equals, the writer says, the transcendent peace of God. He said, God will, if you do this, you will have a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. Let me say it again to you. Prayer and petition plus thanksgiving equals the transcendent peace of God. Yeah. No prayer is complete without some thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. God will give the petitioner the thanksgiver peace for worry, and he will give you peace for your fears. Yeah. He will give you peace for your anxiety. Let me remind you once again, sincerely share your troubles, your worries, your pain, your anxieties to God by way of prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. Well, and no. he promises, I will give you peace yeah. that passes all understanding. Yeah. Then I like what Peter said. Peter just writing there, and Peter there, he says these words. Peter began to write, and, and I'm glad he did it, that Peter 5, 6 through 7. He told them that you ought to cast all your cares upon him. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm reminded then, if I'm going to have peace, not only can I pray, and have my petition and thanksgiving. But when I get to have my preaching and, and my praying and whatever else I'm going to do, I got to get up from there. And the book said, cast all your cares upon him. Yeah. And because he cares for you. In other words, say now, when you rise from all of that, you ought to leave it with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so on this day, I'm saying then that if we are going to feel free from anxiety, if we are going to find healing from anxiety, yeah. we must cast our cares upon him, for he cares for us. Listen to the whole curriculum in that. It says, armor yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, yeah. that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety yeah. and on him because he cares for you. Well, and so you. Peter appears to give the attitude of those who would catch their anxiety, their concern, their weights upon Jesus. He said the person who would do this, not the one who's halting, but the one who would catch their cares there will be the humble one. Yeah. He will be the one who, who don't oppose God. He's not the one who think that I can do it all by myself. Not the one saying I don't need God, mm -hmm. but he's willing to arm it down. It takes humility to serve a good God. Mm -hmm. It takes humility to serve God's church. It takes humility to be your best self. And sometimes, if you cannot be humble, God really can't use you. Mm -hmm. well, Y'all get me out. God need a humble people. He need them humble from the top to the bottom. Yeah. And I tell you, the higher they go, you go, the more humble you ought to become. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you ought not never exalt yourself because if you right. exalt yourself, right. you, you don't know. You may step on the cross in the song say, and your soul will get lost. Right. You get lost on life's journey. Right. So the proud feel they do not need God. But the armor loved him, and we have enough faith to know if I give it to God, it will be in good hands. Yeah. Not just in good hands, but caring hands. For God cares for you. Cast all your anxiety, cast all your cares, cast all of your anxiety, cast all of your worries, cast all of your fears, cast it upon him. And yeah. he said, he put him upon me. I will let you know and you'll feel I care for you. Yeah. Well, and in the Greek, that word there about, about cats, I had to stop that and look it up again. I want to know what were they trying to say. It literally means to throw, to chunk it, to hurl it at him. 
In other words, I believe Peter was trying to tell them that when you go to God sincerely in prayer and get up, when you got all that stuff on, you just throw it at God. God is able to take it. God, help me out. Just throw it at God and cast it off of you. Get rid of it. Cast it down. Cast it down and leave it there. God cares for you. Throw it out and do it quickly. Throw it out. Hurt it off you because it's too much for you to carry. No. It gonna weigh you down. It gonna break you down. Yeah. It gonna take you under. The Bible's writer said anxiety yeah. it weighs heavy no. on a man or a woman. You have to leave it there. So Peter gives us a sense. If you care to God, and though you try, you're tired of it. You're fed up with it. You can't handle it no more. You don't know what to do with it. He said, really just carry to God and leave it there. I don't want it no more, Lord. And so when you don't want it no more, cast it away. When you don't want it no more, hurt it away. When you don't want it no more, throw it away. Don't carry the weight of the world on your shoulder. Why are you carrying the weight when God has given us Jesus? Why are you carrying the burden when God has given us Jesus? He got power yeah. to carry the storm. Yeah. He has power. Yeah. He has the strength to do it. What I cannot do, Jesus has already done. Yeah. Glory to his holy name. Yeah. And so I cast all my cares yeah. upon him. Yeah. He will sustain me. He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. Can the book of Psalms said it this way? Cast your cares on the Lord, yeah. and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall, Psalm 55 and 22. And we sang in our tradition, uh, we can cast all our cares upon him yeah. because he cares for you, us, and he will never let you fall. And when I'm afraid, I put my trust in him. Yeah. When anxiety is great within me, your consolers, your consolers, your consolers, Consolation, O oh Lord, bring joy to my soul. And what one of the psalmists said, and so on this day then, they went on down to say another thing in the text, and I'm going to leave it alone. You remember the writer kept on saying more. He went on down to tell them, this is how you ought to be thinking. He said, finally, brothers, whatever is true, yeah. whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is admirable, praiseworthy, think about such things. He went to the end and said, The God of peace, he will be with you. And that is again over in the book of Philippians, that in that fourth chapter down around the sixth verse there. And so then he really said, If you really gone to give with anxiety, let me tell you what he's saying. You got to change your thoughts. You, you got to separate from bad thoughts. You got to be willing to get to, to get rid of bad thoughts and begin to put on good thoughts. You have to think right to be right. Y'all yeah, help me out. Yeah. You have to think right to grow right. You have to think right. You can have a man or woman who have no problems at all, but if you can mess up their mind, they can think they're the sickest person in the world. Yeah. And so he said, now, where well, if you're going to get rid of all of that, let me read what he says again now. He said, now, if you're really going to get rid of this in God, do not be anxious for anything. You got to have your thoughts right. Yeah. You have to change your thoughts from those thoughts of finality and begin to think mm -hmm. about thoughts of, of a better tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Some of our thoughts, we think about the worst case scenario. We worry about what's going to happen. It could be raining outside, and we get to worry about is it going to flood. Well, somebody, if you change your thoughts, you start thinking about, oh, it's going to water my plants, and I'm going to have a better garden this year. The trees are going to grow. We're going to have water this year. We won't have to worry about a drought. That's good thoughts. Some folks start thinking about what they don't have and start thinking about, well, no, I, I, I don't make what somebody else makes. Don't you worry about that. When you got good thoughts, you say, I'm going to take what I have and I'm going to let God multiply. Y'all yeah. help me out. Yeah. When you got good thoughts, yeah. you don't go around hating nobody. Amen. Hate is not a good thought, y'all. Hate is the worst thought on the earth. Mm -hmm. 
Any man or woman that hate, they're at the bottom of the barrel. I don't care what they say. They're at the bottom of the barrel. And I know they are because if God is love, well, hate is not God. You far away from God. So anybody, so you got thoughts in your mind, let me tell you, you ought to be able to put some positive thoughts in your mind. Yeah. Some faith building thoughts in your mind. Well, Let me say them again. What should my thoughts be? Where the writer tells us your thoughts ought to be true. Yeah. They ought to be noble. They ought to be right. Yeah. They ought to be pure. Yeah. They ought to be lovely. They ought to be admirable. These are the thoughts that God said you ought to have. Yeah. And if you have these thoughts, he says, they are praiseworthy thoughts. And if you have them, I will give you my peace. Yeah. Isn't that good news? Yeah. I will give you my peace. And so this morning, let me, let me just sum it up again. Yeah. Right. Let me sum it up. Healing from anxiety. Yeah. You ought to have, you ought to seek words, or sincerely seek good words. Yeah to heal your anxiety. Good words, please seek, make you ready for the week. If you are sad, if you are mad, good words can make you glad and the psalmist say so. Yeah. Sincerely share your concerns or anxieties by prayer and petition and thanksgiving. Yeah. Take your burdens to the Lord and lead them there. Yes, Lift your heart in thanksgiving. God will give you anxiety-free living. Mm. Yeah, and you ought to humbly cast your cares upon him. Yeah. yeah, you ought to go there humble, and you ought to get up and just say, Here, Lord, I don't want this no more. Here, Lord, yeah. I'm tired of carrying. Here, Lord, Here, Lord, you take it. It is yours, Lord. Let me go free. Yeah, and yeah. do not... Be anxious. Do not be anxious about that. Let your prayer and your petition be made known to God and cast your cares upon Him. And then at the end of the day, you must change your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Somebody got real bad thoughts, but you have to change your thoughts. Okay. You have to change your thoughts because your thoughts determine who you are. Your thoughts determine how you approach other folks. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts determine how you treat me and how you treat God and how you treat your fellow man or woman. You must change your thoughts. Yeah. And so on this day then, I love what was read this morning about when Jesus, Jesus shows up there to the disciples the first time. Yeah. Yeah. The book said he came the first time, those, those 11 who was left. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether the women were there, he does not say, but 11, I'm going to say was 11 plus. Mm -hmm. The 11 plus that was left and Jesus shows up he, and they was there and they had locked themselves in because they were afraid of what may happen to them. Mm -hmm. And on this day, we feel that way. We're in our home. We are locked in, mm -hmm. afraid of what may happen to us, mm -hmm. afraid of that the virus is going to get us, mm -hmm. afraid that we may be victimized. But I come on this day to remind you, Jesus tells us something. Why are you behind your doors, locked in, and even some of you are locked in, you're afraid about what who will break in on you, mm -hmm. even when that is not a virus. Mm -hmm. Most of us live that. We live in that state somewhere. Uh -huh. We worry about what's going to happen to us. Mm -hmm. But then the disciples worry about what the Jews thought about them, mm -hmm. what the Jews, they fear the Jews may come to get them. The Jews would go and say that these disciples, they are the one who knew Jesus. Yeah. They are geared to uh, walk with him three long years. Mm -hmm. They are geared to going around talking about he could heal, that he could reach the poor, that he could set the blind, set the blind eyes to open again. He could give strength to them. They're the one went around yeah. talking about that. They could cast out demons in his name. They guilty. We got to get them, and they knew they were guilty. So they were afraid, and they were all locked in. They were in that social isolation. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. When they, they were locked in, and when they were afraid, and 
They didn't know what to do. The book don't say they were singing the song of Zion. I believe they were standing around saying, oh, what's going to happen to us? Oh, is they going to kill us like they killed Jesus? Are they going to jail us? Are they going to take our jobs away? Are they going to take our health away? Are they going to take our health insurance? Oh, they were behind the door. Yeah. They were wondering about would there be enough doctors? Yeah. Will there be enough nurses? Oh, they were behind the door. Yeah. Will there be so much unemployment that would that would come to a state that the nation would stand still? They were behind the door. But when they were behind the door, yeah. read the book on down. It says, out of nowhere, Jesus came to all. Yeah. Jesus appeared out of nowhere. And he showed up and did them, and they looked up and they saw their Lord, and they were glad. Yeah. Out of nowhere, yeah. Jesus showed up out yeah. of nowhere, and guess what he said? Yeah. He said unto them, peace, peace. be yeah. unto you. Ain't that good news? Yeah. And then, just in case they didn't know who he was, they said then Jesus showed them the, the nail prints in his hand. He uh -huh. showed them the spirit in his side, and they showed up, got glad. Yeah. And then he said unto them one more time, peace yeah. Yeah. be unto you. Yeah. Now let me remind us on this day, you may be at home, uh -huh. you may be all by yourself, uh -huh. but I remind you on this wonderful day, God will to come into your household. God want to come into your home. God want to say unto you, peace. Why do not believe that? Yeah. That God will give us peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that will make you run when you want to sit still. Peace that will make you believe when somebody said you cannot ever believe again. Peace. Do you believe God got peace for you? He got peace that will come into your home and come into your life. You can go all right. He's going to give us some peace. Peace. He said peace. Anybody want peace in your home? Anybody want peace of Mr. Virus? behind your doors. But I'm so glad doors can't keep him out. I'm so glad locks can't keep him out. I'm so glad my fears can't keep him out. I'm so glad even my doubts can't keep him out. And he will come at the right time. He will show up on time and tell Somebody uh, who 
want to be free from anxiety, hear from this anxiety that you can say, I'm going to survive it because God has healed me from it. If you are in internet land, may I say, and you hear, and you're saying, Pastor, I've never been saved before, so I'm living in my anxiety. But I even where my future will lie if I die. If you have that anxiety, I invite you to know Jesus Christ. Give Jesus Christ your life. If you're here, if you're there, and you are sat on this balls, I want to know him as my Savior. Come on, give your life wherever you are. And when we pray, I want you to pray within your heart with us. And maybe that's somebody saying, I need a place for other folks who may have gone through the same anxiety I'm going through, but I need a family to help me along the way. I need a church family. My family needs a church family. And you will saying, I invite you to join the local churches. And you want to join the First St. Paul's churches that is called the First St. Paul. And look us up and, and give us a call and we'll run you down and, and we will take you in. We will pray with you and we also will pray you to come to life. If, you, if you're there and you said, I need a word of prayer, just hang on. We're going to pray in a minute. So if you need to be saved, you bow your head to that God come into your life. And after you do that, you seek a church home. If you don't have a church home, I invite you to come call somebody at church. I would love to have everybody here, but I can't have everybody. God has ministers for everybody and everyone. And if you say, Pastor, I need a word of prayer. Hang on. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, God, for this day of praise and worship. But day, God, you put before us and gave us another chance to try to get it right. And so, God, for those who want to be saved, hear that cry, God. And so, on this day, God, we pray with them. We pray that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that you will raise Jesus Christ from the dead and that he will circumstances and can tell them peace be unto you. So God, in the name of Jesus, be, be with them. And then, oh God, then, oh God, there are others in these church homes scattered across the county, scattered across Atlanta, scattered across Georgia, and the world, and, and the nation, dear God. Wherever they are, God, oh God, I pray on this day, God, you come, you come into the light. And give them the unction and the ability to get up from where they are and seek out church homes. That when we open again, they will find themselves in this huge sad thank you, Jesus. And then, oh God, that others, God, we just need a word of prayer, God. So, God, we pray for those who feel anxiety, who are fearful and worried and concerned about tomorrow. God, in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't mind, God, move in a modern way. Yes, God. God, move in their lives. Go behind the closed doors, God. And let your appearance, God, your presence, your anointing be with them, God. Let them know you, God, and you love them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray and believe that you are the God. Oh, we don't have to be anxious no more. We don't have you the God. We can give you the prayer, the petition, our thanksgiving. And in turn, you will give us your peace that passes all understanding. You will give us a transcendent peace. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. No other power. No other power.
Now I will be bringing you your announcements. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 We want to give a special shout out to our Sunday school crew. They have prepared an awesome website for our youth to be able to go on and learn and grow in Jesus. Amen. Amen. So attention to all of our youth. The Sunday school lessons for today can be found at, go ahead youth, get ready to pull out those iPads, www.youth.com. FSP.com. Right. We have lessons and a follow-up activity ready for three age groups. Our primary class, which is for all of us, with the, which is for all of our youth ages zero to eight. Our junior class is for our nine to eleven year olds, and our, our intermediate class is for ages twelve through eighteen. If you have questions, you can send them an email at youthfsp at gmail.com. The adult Sunday school class, we can't leave our adults out, amen, which is being led by Brother Jesse Williams, meets every Sunday at 9 a.m. by calling in to the call-in number, which is 701-802-5372. Again, 701-802-5372. The access code is 313-4042. Again, the access number is 313 313- 4042. So if you miss us today, join us next Sunday at 9 a.m. Amen. 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 The church is still alive. Amen. Amen. And is active. And we have plenty of wonderful activities for you to attend throughout the week via Facebook as well as Zoom. We have our Monday Motivational Monday call at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. We have a Bible discovery class on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Right. We have our Amplified Lessons for Christian Living on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. for ages 19 and up. Amen. And, of course, you know every Sunday you can join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. And our youth Sunday school, of course, is every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. So our church is, is alive. Amen. Amen. And there's plenty for you to do. So come on and get you a little more Jesus. Amen. So we're glad to have you. We know you all are from all over the world. And if you are, if you are visiting us, go ahead and place where you're coming from so that we can be able to reach back out to you. We thank God for you. We want you to have a blessed week. And I just want to pray that God will bless you in a mighty way. So we thank God. We yes. thank God for his covering in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's virtual giving time. Okay. Yes. Amen. And we have been blessed by Pastor with a beautiful message on uh, living and striving through these anxieties and making the best healing through our anxieties. So as we know that some of you all have re received a little check in the mail <laughs> or a little deposit, a deposit in your um, check account. Amen. Not everybody. Some on the way still. Praise the Lord. But for those that have received, we ask that you lovingly give as God has blessed you. There are four opportunities to give. And that is, of course, I'm mailing your donations to 2687 Klondike Road, Lithonia, Georgia, 30058. Also, you can drop your donations by the church today. We'll be here until 1145. Amen. We've been staying here the new mission. Okay, but y'all come soon. Come on. Be on the way now. Just come on. You won't <laughs> drop it off. And you can also go to fspamec.org, make your donation by clicking the donate button. And also by GiveLify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Look up First St. Paul and give. Now next Sunday is fourth Sunday, and it's Faith Giving Sunday. We don't need you all to step it up. Because you know how the competition goes and I probably won't be up here, but, well, I will be up here, but also, you know, Sister Crawford will be up here, too. So, you all start getting organized today to have your donations ready to be turned in next Sunday. All right? So, as that, uh, the, the maestro gives us, I'm trying to figure out what we, we say we're going to do. He's going to give us some music, some giving music. So, you all, uh, it's going to be a little extended version today. Because we want y'all to have plenty of good time to get up from your family altar that you've already established in the name of Jesus. And y'all going to dance around and get the phone. Come on, Matt's choir, get ready. Stand on up and get ready. 
now, God, in the midst of this anxiety, heal us, God, from the anxiety. Give us the power not to be anxious, but in all things of God. Bring them forth unto you by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving. And we believe you will hear us and set us free to be our best self and to live more for you. Be with us now. In everlasting name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let the whole body of Christ say, Amen. Jesus, please. 